When installing cable, there's always a risk of pushing too hard and breaking the fiber or folding it inside the conduit. At Condux, we've decided to prevent this expensive accident by designing a reliable crash protection system right into the Gulfstream. And it all starts with the crash test. Now we're gonna crash test. Crash test is one of the most important things you can do when getting ready to blow fiber. When we crash test, we're gonna be using um, a scrap piece of duct like this. Now the duct can be any size. This is about 10 feet long. It can be five, it can be seven. Whatever you have laying around is gonna be just fine. But we're gonna use a scrap piece of duct and then we're simply gonna run bare fiber through there. We're gonna use only the tracks. So we're not gonna be putting any air into the air block. We're just gonna be using the air to run the tracks and the speed. So let's go ahead and start putting it together. When you put the conduit into the air block, you wanna make sure that the conduit lines up flush with your duct seal. And then you go ahead and you tighten it down. You just need to tighten it down enough so that you've got a really good grab on the duct. Okay, so the duct is in and what we need to put in is a venturi. The venturi is gonna help guide the fiber from the rollers straight into the duct. And when we actually start using air to install, we'll put cable seals on the cable that will sit right here. But for now, we don't need to use that because again, we're not putting air on this. We're just measuring how much clamp force and how much speed we can put on um, the fiber without folding it into the duct. The other thing we need to do is we need to plug the end of the duct. And all we're doing is simulating an obstruction. And that obstruction would be similar to a heavy kink in your line, some rock that might have fallen in there, anything that could block the line. So we're gonna put our rear cable guides in. And all the rear cable guides do is they allow the cable an even path from here to the rear rollers and then from the rear rollers to the belts, just like that. Now because we're just doing bare cable right now, we can just feed these straight through the end and guide that right up onto the Venturi and right down into the duct. We've got the cable in and now we're just gonna put the top of that Venturi on. All that's designed to do is to give it a nice straight path right into the conduit. And when we tighten down the air block for this, air block doesn't have to be as tight as it would for installation simply because all we're doing is trying to keep the Venturi in place, that's it. There's two parts to crash testing that we're trying to measure. First, if we send the fiber down the line and we have too much down pressure, too much speed, if it hits an obstruction, will it fold the fiber? The second thing we're looking for is slippage. If it doesn't fold, we also don't want our rollers continuing to spin and burn through the jacket while it's on the obstruction. So those are the goals. Now there's a couple other things to keep in mind. Um, if you're living in a climate where you have all four seasons, a lot of times in the spring and the fall, you could be installing fiber in the morning when it's 35 degrees out. But by afternoon, it's 65, 70. The characteristics of the cable change with those temperature fluctuations. Go ahead and do a crash test in the morning when you're doing your first install. However, sometimes it's a good idea in the afternoon, one o'clock, something like that, to go ahead and do another crash test. That way you can be confident that the settings you started off with earlier in the day are gonna work later on in the day. And if you do have to change those characteristics, that's fine, just jot them down. The other thing you wanna do is keep in mind that as long as you're using the same fiber from the same manufacturer, you're good. As long as you're using the same duct size, you're good, okay? You don't have to crash test all the time, okay? But what you do wanna be aware of is even if you're using the same diameter cable but from a different company, you're gonna to wanna to retest it. Or you're using the same diameter fiber from the same company, but it's a different kind of fiber, you're also gonna to wanna to retest that. Also, if you're using that same fiber, but you've gone from an inch, inch and a quarter, whatever it is, up to an inch and a half or two inch, or whenever you change conduit sizes, it's also very important that you crash test too. The size of the duct is gonna determine whether you can crash a fiber in a lot of cases as well. Now, we've got basically everything set up. All I need to do is put some tape on the end. I got it all the way down to the end. I'm gonna put some tape on it. Electrical tape is typically on hand, but if you've got a marker or anything you can use to mark that spot on the cable right next to the machine is all you're gonna need. This way, if we're feeding the cable in and it actually folds, we're gonna be able to say, oh yeah, um, we can't see that tape anymore. We know it's been folded, okay? So once that's all ready to go, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back 
my cable up and then drop my rollers. And the idea with this is I've got my clamp force pressure. The clamp force pressure is basically how hard the rollers are squeezing the fiber. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase my speed, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, is kind of work between these two. So right now I'm at two PSI on my, on my clamp force. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start applying air to the motors. And I'm gonna hold the cable with my hand. I can feel it slowly starting to grab my hand wanting to suck it in. But what I wanna do is just give it enough so that the rollers aren't moving. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let it go. It went down to the end and it stopped, but I can see my tape is right here. It didn't fold the fiber, but the tracks have also stopped, so that's, that's good. Now what I wanna do is I wanna increase my clamp force. So what I wanna do is I wanna back this up again. I wanna drop my rollers, increase my clamp force up to about four, and now I wanna do the same thing. And right about there, and I'm gonna let it go. Okay, it hit the obstruction again. It didn't fold the fiber, so I back it up and I do it again. And basically we keep doing this until we get to a point where we get our clamp force pressure high enough and our speed high enough that when I let it go and it hits the obstruction at the end, it actually folds the fiber. The goal of crash testing is to, is to either fold the fiber or get the pressure high enough that you know that the machine can't fold the fiber. Whenever you're crash testing, you know that you're gonna throw away about a, maybe four, five, six foot piece of fiber uh, before you do this. But you also know that when you actually go to install that two, three, 4,000 foot run, that there's no way the fiber is gonna fold on you. So again, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back this out. I'm gonna increase my pressure to about six and I'm gonna start speeding up. I'm gonna let it go, nothing. So at this point, we're getting into a range where it's really gonna be hard to fold this fiber. The likelihood is that if I leave this right where it's at, it's gonna install at a good speed, but it's also never gonna fold your fiber, and that's what you want it to do. You see the rollers have stalled out, so you're not gonna burn through your fiber on the obstruction, and you know that it's not pushing hard enough for you to, uh, to fold the fiber. And that's how you crash test.